Let's build a cat whisker detector out of more common material, something that doesn't require a 3D printer. Uh, this block of wood, some brass, uh, this piece of stainless steel, stainless steel ball. And yeah, let's, uh, let me rearrange things and I can show you what I got in mind. My plan right now is to take this block of wood, which is about two centimeters wide, and to cut something that looks a little bit like this out of it. And I will do that by this piece back here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drill holes along here and then saw it, leaving that back edge and removing the chiseling away this front edge. So that again, I will have this kind of, shall we call it an L shape or a shoe shaped item, but we'll do that here. And then I'll cut out this square, leaving this down here for this sample well and that's about it so it's time for less talk and more do well here i've got things marked out and uh, what i need to do is this whole chunk right here will be cut out so it'll be that piece that's gone and then i will let's see it's better to show this from the top i will take out this so this is part of that whole chunk right here that's going to come out like that and it'll leave this foot right here so that the sample will be set down here this piece will be half chiseled out so this is where I'm going to drill I'm going to drill little marks along here and then take the saw and cut this just this section here halfway through and that will leave this piece that's halfway through and it'll leave all this and all of this so again it will look uh, like a, a shoe shape or an l and assuming i can execute the plan then uh, i will be back and i will show you that You can see where I've cut away this piece and removed that. You can see the uh, lines where I drilled through down there, done some sanding on it, and it's kind of resembling this. So now the trick is I need to get this ball somehow create a divot on this side so that the ball sits in there nicely with my limited measuring skills so it's got to be something like that and there's got to be enough pressure from this uh, brass plate to hold it in place so that's the next trick is i need to go do that we have our divot for the ball in here and how i did this is not very craftsmanlike the ball is 19 millimeters, uh, three quarters of an inch. And what I did is I just measured down from here about one centimeter just to give myself a millimeter or two up at the top. I drilled a hole through the center and that way I could keep track of how close I was coming to this back wall. Um, and then I just took a large drill bit and then by hand ground this out and kept, you know, trial, trial and error just <laughs> uh, over and over again until I got it to fit. Now, what will happen is we will have one of these. And from my previous videos, what this is, this is the cat whisker arm. Uh, there's a wooden ball back here for an insulator. There's the three quarter inch stainless ball. This one came with a really huge hole in the back. So this is just a part of a pop rivet in order to help fill up that hole. I put stainless steel inside here so that I can shift the rod back and forth and still have electrical contact. Uh, again, stainless steel rod and then a spring that I mangled up uh, on purpose to make it fit tightly on the on the shaft. And then I sharpened this little point down here. So that goes here in the uh, in the divot. And then what happens is I got this piece of metal, this piece of brass that I was using to actually help me measure the uh, how how far in I was going. And I don't know if I can, yes. Okay, so 
yeah, you can see that there's still an angle to that. And I did that on purpose because I want some springiness to the brass and I want to be able to control it by screwing in these two screws. And let's start putting those in there. And then we can show what happens. Now the newest beads I got don't have the big hole in the, in the uh, back side and I don't need the pop rivet. And those aren't going in straight, of course. There we go. So by the amount of pressure I put while screwing in the screws, I can control the how much pressure this brass plate is putting on the ball there. And there we go. Now again, the reason I put this divot in here is so that the shaft will have a full range of motion from one side to the other. And because of this pop rivet thingy back here, I'm going to have to cut out a little bit more on the wood back there. So this will travel to the uh, far side over here. And then again, we have the ability to move this back and forth so I can uh, cover the necessary area. Okay, now you're asking what are you going to do to put your sample in there? And that's an excellent question. I could just put a piece of brass here and then solder a weld to it or something. I thought about using this piece of brass and screwing it down here, drilling a hole in the wood. And then when I set the sample on there, that would give me a little well to, to uh, hold the sample down. That's kind of a second choice. What I would really like is a uh, end cap, copper pipe end cap, but it turns out my hardware store stopped selling copper. So um, yeah, not today. Uh, what else? I think that's about it. I mean, we can uh, connect electrically to one of these screws and that would be one side of our of our diode, our detector. And then of course, uh, depending on how you set this up, whether you use a copper pipe end cap or a piece of brass like this with a hole in it, the uh, screws you mount it down with would be the other side of the connector. So yeah. Um, that's about it. I mean, if you want to build a detector and you don't want to have to 3D print it or whatever, this is a way to do it. Okay, well, I hope you found that useful and interesting in your crystal radio experimentation.